so beta in your previous class i explained everything related to force type of forces like contact forces non contact forces okay acceleration torque thrust and uh, other things mass velocity okay and uh, weight do you understand all that clearly yes so i am opening the test there will be 10 questions and you just have to give me the answer of all that are you able to see clearly on your screen yes great so here first question is what is a force uh, a push a yeah force is an influence that causes an object to change great which force did charles augustin de coulomb first describe The electrostatic force. Yes. What does Newton's first law of motion states? Objects with balanced forces acting on them will stay at rest or in constant motion. Okay. What are the unit of forces? Newtons. Okay. Newtons. So Newton's second law of motion can be summarized by which equation? F equals m a. Yes. What is friction? A uh, friction is a force that opposes motion. Great. How do you calculate resultant force? By adding together all the forces that act upon an object. Yes, the same thing that I explained that to you. Okay. And what happens if the resultant force on a car is in the direction in which it is traveling? Um, it, it increases in speed. Okay. What is the gravitational field strength of the moon? Um, 1.6 Newton per kilogram. Okay. If a person has a weight 600 Newton, how much will be the weight on moon? <coughs> um, Wait, can I please work this out? Yeah, you just have to solve that one, beta. W equals to mg. You have to apply formula. Always remember that. I think that uh, uh, the whatever weight, the gravity of moon, that is one by sixth of the gravity on Earth. Okay. So yes. if the weight of a moon, if a, if the weight of a person on Earth, that is something. So that's weight on moon that will be one by six of. Um, ninety-six newtons. Okay. So let's check your answer. Almost you did all the questions right. So let's confirm about that. Oh yes, fantastic, fantastic. It seems that you understand each and everything whatever I'm explaining that to you, huh? Yes. Oh, one more important thing. I want to ask you one thing. Uh, what about progress of your uh, brother told me about if he's understanding all that, what I'm explaining to you, explaining to him? I think so, yes. Oh, great. That's right. That's very good. Yes, yes, but also you have to motivate him that have patience and whatever that I'm explaining that just try to understand that if he will also as if you are asking if you generally used to ask me 10 times then I used to explain that to you. If he will also ask me 10 times or 100 times I am keeping promise that I'll explain that to him. So just you have to motivate that beta as you are getting marks. So he will also be able to get marks 100%. Okay, so yes. 
Thanks for your patience and also cooperation, beta. Next topic that we will study this time that is falling and stopping. Okay. So yes. falling and stopping a little bit before scrolling down. That falling that means if an object that is moving or if an object that is in motion continuously. Okay. Yes. Understand and stopping. That means after a little bit means falling object. You can also understand that which would like to have like terminal velocity. Okay. Yes. Okay. In which one their resultant or resulting result resulting force that would be zero. A stopping distance. A distances depends on speed, mass, road surface, and reaction time. Okay. Yes. Is stopping, but are falling and is stopping. So suppose that you can also understand that falling. That suppose that if you will drop a stone from a height, okay, of a building, then falling. That means it would like to give you phenomena by which you will be able to understand that whatever time that it will take or whatever time that object will take to reach up to the ground. Okay, what will be the affection affection of uh, air friction, pressure, and all the all the means uh, contents surrounding atmosphere? Secondly, a stopping that means if you are applying, as you can understand in a very simple way. Suppose that if your father is applying brake, so after applying brake, what will be the cause by which? your uh, car will come into rest position and what will be the main affection of that one okay means either the type of air friction either type of jerk and all that and how much time that it will okay it will yes. take to come into rest position and most important that when your father will apply brake that in uh, in which acceleration that car was moving at that particular time Okay. Yes. Understand that? Yes. Great. That's right. Great, great. So now let's start. First one is your terminal velocity. So terminal velocity that means suppose that falling object that I explained that to you there are two type of forces which would like to act upon a falling object okay at a different stage of its fall okay yes fundamentally i want to tell you one thing suppose that when you will drop a stone from the top of the building so at a starting point and in between its path and at the end point before stucking the ground the energy in the stone that will be constant okay you yes. just have to understand that the energy that will be mgh okay yes mgh that will be mass into gravity into height okay at each and every condition okay yes mm -hmm. also falling object so as i explained that to you there are two main forces so first one that is your weight of object okay yes with respect to mass with respect to object mass and gravity okay so that means uh, how much is the mass of object and what gravity that is affecting that mass so firstly falling falling object that will affect by that one okay so main factor that is your weight of an object okay and air resistance that means frictional force okay air resistance that means what will be the affection of frictional force Okay. Yes. Understand, beta? Yes. Yeah. So, these through these two factors, do you understand that clearly? Yes. Yeah. So here, one important thing that two or three things that gravitational field, that means the area of space surrounding a body in which another body experiences a force of gravitational attraction. Okay. Yes. Next is mass. As I explained that to you, amount of matter that object contains, and mass is measured in kilogram. 
third one is that is frictional force that means the force which have the tendency to oppose the motion of object okay or the force which resist the motion okay yes understand yes great so now next is three stage of falling yeah as i explained that to you there will be three stage of falling first one at the starting position the object will be in rest position when you will left the object when you will leave the object then from starting position it starts to accelerate okay yes it starts to accelerate okay downwards because of its weight okay yes there is a little air resistance there is a resultant force acting downwards yes why the resultant force acting downward because whatever force that the object is applying or whatever force that yeah object is applying uh, towards gravity okay that force that will be less than the force of gravity that's why that the resultant force that will be in the direction of direction in which the object is moving okay that means downwards okay yes always remember that if a object is freely falling that means the acceleration that will be constant okay up to yes. when the object will be close to earth okay yes as it gains speed the object's weight stays the same but the air resistance on it increases okay yes yes there is a resultant force acting downwards again and the third one third stage that is eventually the object weight is balanced by the air resistance okay there is no resulting force and the object reaches a steady speed which is known as terminal velocity okay yes you can also understand in this way suppose that when suppose that a sky diver is at a height okay and yes. when he will jump okay so in that condition after jumping he will accelerate in the beginning okay yes beginning of his fall as the sky diver is speed up the air resistance from air resistance force that will increase or not because that in very rapid manner that it will come it will tend to reach to earth okay so in that yes. way that whatever graph you are seeing here so it is your acceleration graph okay yes okay and then at when it will reach to its terminal velocity the air resistance force and the weight that will be equal okay so yes. the speed will constant that's why you can see that a little bit graph that is parallel to x axis okay understand yes and the when he will open parachute when he will open parachute then uh, it it will be just like as applying brake to the car okay we suppose that when you, uh, suppose that you are accelerating car con continuously and after a particular time and then you applied brake so after acceleration then your graph will be just like as first graph you are seeing that okay curve graph and when you will apply brake that instantly that the car will tend okay to decrease its velocity or not or speed yes so when it will do so then randomly then randomly that its a declaration that will be there okay a depreciation there will be so if depreciation in speed will be there then one time will come okay one time will come that okay firstly that when it will accelerate then one time will come when its velocity okay and when its weight or you can also understand that when air resistance force and the weight that will be equal so in that condition speed will be constant so that's why the, are you able to see my moving cursor on the screen yes 
Yes. So you can see that where I am placing my cursor. So here you can see a little bit portion that is parallel to x axis or not. Yes. So here you can understand clearly that at this stage the speed that will be constant, okay? And then the sky diver will open its parachute. And when the parachute open, which increases the air resistance instantly, okay? And then yes. it slows the sky diver, okay? Then the speed of skydiver that will be very slow that's why that just inverted graph that means a declaration that will be there okay yes yes so that means in that condition air resistance that will increase and which will slow the skydiver and when the skydiver will be tend to reach up to the ground okay so skydiver continues to slow down until the new resistance air resistance force and weight that will be equal you can see that at this portion okay yes. so it will reach up to new terminal velocity okay and then that means a few meter or, or few meter or few feet above the ground then when terminal velocity that will be that will be equal when the weight of object and resistance force that will be equal so the new terminal velocity it will reach and very quickly that skydiver that will reach to the ground okay yes do you understand that um yes what does terminal velocity mean is that Beta. when the weight and air resistance is the same yes 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 Terminal velocity that means so when the weight and air resistance that will be same. So in that way, in that way, when the terminal velocity means terminal velocity that means when the air resistance force and the weight that will be equal. Okay. Yes. What will be the effect of air resistance? Air resistance always that will slow the speed. Yes, as soon as the air resistance will increase, the speed of object that will decrease. Okay. Yes. Understand? Yes. Okay. Now next is. Yeah, they are saying that what happens if you will drop a feather and a coin together. The feather and the coin have roughly the same surface area, okay? So when they begin to fall, they have about the same air resistance. As the feather fall, its air resistance increases until it soon balance the weight of the feather. The feather now falls at its terminal velocity, however the coin is much heavier so it will it has to travel quite fast before air resistance is large enough to balance its weight okay yes in fact that is uh, you can understand in this way suppose that if you will if you will uh, drop a feather and a coin so fundamentally that if there will be no air friction so your feather and your coin that will reach up to ground at the same time okay yes but as you that there is air friction so and feather that has the large area of cross section in that condition the maximum air resistance that it will experience okay and a coin that have a coin that's of having less area of cross section that's why that it will experience less uh, means air pressure sorry air resistance okay and regarding to its weight okay because its mass is also greater than with respect to uh, feather so that's why that it will take less time to reach up to the ground okay yes do you understand clearly yes great now we can move on the moon an astronaut 
on the moon that carried out a famous experiment here yeah. he dropped a hammer and a feather at the same time okay yes and found that they landed together okay that means yes. they would like to take same time to reach up to the ground why because the moon's gravity is too weak for it affect it attract an atmosphere this means that no air can surround it so there will be no air resistance and if there will be no air resistance so the hammer and the feather hammer and the feather that will reach up to ground at the same time with same acceleration okay yes understand yes great now come to the next page beta yeah experiment on falling okay so experiment on falling that means you can understand that if an object is falling okay if an object is falling then the factors which affect the terminal velocity that is its mass its surface area and the acceleration due to gravity okay yes understand yes so if the mass yeah so if the mass that will be greater okay if the mass that will be greater so it is very difficult actually uh, the three factors do you understand that which will affect yes okay so next is it is very difficult to investigate the effect of change in acceleration due to gravity in the science laboratory it is easier to investigate the effect of gravity on mass and surface area this is done by connecting light gates to the data logger as an object passes through the beam of light it triggers a sensor recording the time it is possible to change either the mass or the surface area of the object but for a valid experiment only one of these variable can be changed at a random time okay yes the effect of falling can be measured by attaching a mass to a parachute okay we I mean, suppose that if you want to understand the effect of mass so suppose that when the sky diver will open the parachute if at the and then it will start to uh come downwards at constant velocity okay so in that way suppose that if a extra mass that will if another diver would like to hang himself with with him so in that condition the mass will increase or not um yes and yeah because that at that condition that uh there will be two sky diver with one parachute so 100% then the mass will increase and in that condition when mass will increase then air resistance that will be less okay when mass will increase then air resistance that will be less that means that parachute will starts to come downwards very quickly clear yes. so yes. that means it will take less time to reach up to ground yes clear yes great so do you understand clearly yes science presenter john chase described aristotle's and galileo's theories about falling bodies so now come to the third page now next is a stopping distance a stopping distance that means it will be equals to thinking distance plus breaking distance yeah one more important thing what is thinking distance means suppose that if i am 
if I am riding a car, okay, if I am driving a car and instantly that an animal came in front of my car, okay, so in how many time that I will think about that any object that is in front of me and in how much time that I will react on that incidence and I will apply breath and the third one that means in how many time that I will take to apply break and regarding to that the object will come into rest okay yes so that means it takes time I mean to explain that it takes time for a driver to react to the situation and apply brakes. The car carries on moving during this reaction time. The thinking distance is the distance traveled in this reaction time. I mean suppose that you are just you just saw that there is an animal in front of your car. So of seeing that animal, so when you will tend to apply brake then in that time at least one or two seconds that will pass away or not yes so in one or two seconds that 100 percent your car will move a little bit more distance yes. okay so that's why they are saying that whatever distance that your vehicle will travel after seeing a type of obstruction or any type of animal in front of your car okay that distance which your car will travel after seeing that animal that is that means that is known as your stopping distance okay yes. or that is also known as thinking distance okay yes means not of totally stopping distance that will generally known as thinking distance okay simply yes you can understand that will be your thinking distance and then when you will think about that that I should have to apply brake and then you will tend to apply brake so that will also be that is also known as your braking distance okay yes. that is your braking distance that means in how much time so also that means just to apply brake that you also would like to take a little bit time okay to apply brake and when you will apply brake then that is in which time that you will apply break that is known as your breaking time okay yes understand yes yeah great so now next is yeah thinking distance you can see that here is written also thinking distance is the distance traveled in this reaction time okay <coughs> thinking distance increases if the reaction time increases okay this can happen if the driver is tired yeah suppose that if i am tired so in that condition that it is not possible for me to react very quickly okay or if the driver is distracted okay so that means if i am thinking about any another matter okay then also it is not possible for me to apply to think to think very quickly and to apply your breath okay yes or the third condition that if the driver will be under the influence of alcohol or other thing okay or other drugs yes, yes. so that means of taking alcohol or other drugs it is not possible to think about that either you have to apply break or not and how much distance before that you have to apply break so as to save yourself clear yes do you understand that yes great so that's why that thinking distance thinking distance can also be increased as the car's speed increase okay so that yes. means in that condition if the speed of car that will be maximum so that's why that thinking time okay that will be minimum or not yes so in less time so in less time maximum in very less time maximum distance your car will travel okay yes so that's why that in that condition thinking time okay that will be very less understand yes now next is your braking distance okay 
breaking distance is the distance in which in which that means the distance in which the car when you will apply brake and then in that distance the object or vehicle will come into rest position okay yes so clearly you can understand that when the speed will be maximum okay when the speed will be maximum then the braking distance that will be minimum okay yes yes means oh sorry means you can also understand in this way suppose that if if your speed will be maximum then your braking distance will also be maximum that means you just have to uh, you just want maximum maximum distance to apply brake okay yes understand yes yeah braking distance you can also understand here is written braking distance is the distance taken to stop once the brake are applied okay so if the speed of car that will be maximum okay so it will it will require maximum distance okay to after applying brake to come object into rest position okay yes yes so here the yeah so braking distance increases braking distance increases if the car's brake or tire are in poor condition yes because when you apply brake that then regarding to that one the friction force starts to act which will oppose the motion okay and the air resistivity also will work but in that condition if the tire okay wear and tear force that will not act between that means the friction force that will be less or least if your tire will be in poor condition okay yes secondly if there are poor road and weather condition like icy or wet road so in that way also it is not possible to apply brake and to uh, rest the object in a very quick time okay yes yes so third one that is a car has a large mass okay because braking distance that can also increase as the car's speed increase okay yes yeah so this graph that can explain clearly to here you can see that a uh, thinking distance that is a red one and the uh, miss blue that is your braking distance suppose you are moving 20 km per hour then 50 50 chances that will be for you to apply to think about thinking distance and braking distance okay when your speed will be 30 km per hour so you can see that a thinking thinking uh, distance that will be a little bit less and braking distance that will be a little bit more a little bit more now when you will be on 40 okay so in that way that thinking distance that will be less and a braking distance that will be more okay because now there will be very less time okay to think about and the car will move car requires the maximum distance to stop okay understand yes so that's why you are seeing that thinking distance that is getting less but as soon as the speed of car is increasing then the braking distance that is increasing or not yeah because that when your speed of car will be maximum so that means in that way you will have to require maximum distance okay to yes. stop your car okay and yes. then 60 then thinking distance will be less but stopping distance that will be your maximum okay yes or braking distance and when it will be 70 then thinking distance that will be a little bit more but the braking distance that should be maximum okay yes 
Do you understand that? Yes. That's great. Now, when the brakes are applied, work is done by the frictional force. Yes, between the brakes and the wheels. This has the following effect. Yes. So, when you will apply brake, it reduces the kinetic energy of the vehicle okay, into potential energy. That means, after applying brake, the car will have the type of tendency to reduce its speed and one time will come that when it will be in rest position. Clear? Yes. Secondly, it increases the temperature of the brakes. Yes. So, means when you will apply brake, so in that way that if time is less, so in very least time the maximum work that you have to do or not. So yes. in the in the maximum work, in maximum work the maximum energy also would like to consume. That's why that you can see that there will be a type of energy which would like to come out, okay, as force, okay. Yes. Okay, and also maximum energy that will be like as means force as well as means heat I means there are different type of energies which would like to come out okay with respect to when you will apply brake okay yes understand yes so that means so when you will apply brake and you will have very least time okay of reaction so in that condition and if the reaction will you want to do reaction in a very fast way so, 100% your kinetic energy that will change into heat energy, okay? That's why that the tire of your vehicle that would like to, means a little bit that will increase the temperature and it may be that a little bit it will burn from different points or different distances or different surfaces, okay? Yes. Yes. We suppose that if you will apply brake, means three or four times very randomly and just come out of your car and just uh, take your nose nearby the car uh, car wheels so 100% you would like to smell a little bit rubber yeah burning rubber smell there okay yes understand that yes okay that's good do you understand that yes Okay, I am coming in one second. I am going to drink water. Wait a second. Yes, I am back. So, now, beta, move to activity. Wait, I don't think that there is a test. That, yeah, test is also there. So, in that way. So. Do you understand that, what I explained that to you? Yes. Okay. Now, 10 questions that are on your screen, you just have to read the question and tell me your answer. Okay. Um, the first one would be weight and air resistance. Okay. At what stage in an object's fall does the resultant force act downwards? Um, when just after it starts to fall. Just after it starts to fall. Very good. Now the third one. When does a falling object reach terminal velocity? When the resultant force is zero. When the resulting force is zero. Okay. 
when does a falling object reach terminal velocity? Um, when the weight and air resistance is the same or equal. Okay. Which option? When the weight and when air and resistance are equal. Second option? Yes. Good. Why do a dropped feather and a hammer hit the moon at the same time? Um, there's no air resistance. Okay. So, next is, there is no air resistance. Fifth one. Okay, let me scroll up. Yes. How do you calculate a stopping distance? Thinking distance plus breaking distance. Give me a second. What you are saying, Bata? Thinking distance plus breaking distance. Okay, thinking distance plus breaking distance. So, how can we reduce our breaking distance? Um. A better breaks. Better breaks, okay. <clears throat> okay. How can we reduce the thinking distance? Um. Um, drinking a cup of tea. Drinking a cup of... How can we reduce the thinking distance? Okay. Drinking a cup of tea. Okay. Which of these is it difficult to measure in the laboratory? Which of these is difficult to measure in the laboratory? The effect of changes in as acceleration due to gravity. Effect of change in acceleration due to gravity. Okay. What effect does the release of a parachute have upon a falling person? Um, it increases their air resistance. Okay. So let's check your score. Oh, fantastic. Very good. Very good. Very good. Thank you. That's right. Wow. Every time that you are getting 10 out of 10 beta, it seems that you are understanding perfectly all that. Next is your momentum and forces. So, 